Here's a little bonus about rendering with Arnold. I have my resolution gate on so I can see what will be rendered. And you might have been using this little clapboard right here to render current frame. Go under Arnold and select Render. And in a moment, you'll start to see these pixels fill in. I'm clicking the stop button because if I record a video and have that going, my audio will cut out. With Arnold Render View, you'll get an image that's interactive with the viewport, meaning if I move a light around, which I'll do in a moment from now, you'll see the update happen within this view. And when it's done, you can go under File, Save Image, just like the other one, and you're not going to get any little screen garbage, such as a UI interface of a box that just didn't render out. So this is very good to adjust your scene, which I'll do right now. I'm going to click on this button to start the interactive mode, and you'll see the pixels fill in. I'm selecting a light, and I'm going to adjust the light's intensity, and then I'll move the light around. At any time, click the stop button, and that will stop the regeneration of the scene. Though you could just let it run, fills out the scene totally. Then you would just go under File, Save Image, and just call it. And now you saved an image. So this is an interactive way to work with your scene. When, you, when it's time to render, go under your render settings, and under System, select GPU if you do have a GPU. So this is a bonus thing. If your computer has a GPU in it, take advantage of it and select GPU. This is the minimal amount of memory to use reserved for rendering. I have a max on this card of six gigs. This is the size of that bucket that fills in as it draws out the image, renders the image to screen. So you can play with this. There's some equation depending upon what you're rendering, the size of the bucket and the memory free will give you the fastest result. And you have to experiment with the image to see what does give you a faster result. If it's one image, guess it doesn't matter much, but if it's a bunch of images for animation, you do want to experiment because saving seconds per frame adds up at the end of the day. So I'm going to click on close. So let's do some quick renderings. Going under render settings, and I'm going to unenable this setting going to Arnold, render, and then wait for this to render. So 12 seconds later, and I'll take a snapshot of it. You can take a snapshot by clicking this little triangle here, clicking the snapshot icon, which is right here. So this is my current image. Going back under Render Settings, Arnold, Enabling, at a sampling of 10, and just wait for it to render. This one took 20 seconds. I'll take another snapshot. And now you can compare them side by side. This is the original one, and this is the one with the Enable checkbox, with the number set to 10. Let's do one more. Setting enabled on and this number to 20. I do have under systems my GPU selected. And here it goes. And this one's done. Let me take a snapshot of, of it. This one took 1 minute and 18 seconds. This image took 20 seconds, and this one took 12 seconds. So 12 seconds, very good for a preview. For maybe proxy footage, or depending upon your type of animation, maybe this is fine, and 20 seconds. So this means you can render three frames a minute, or this one's over one minute per frame. Here, one second of animation would take 10 minutes to um, render out, and here, one second of animation would take roughly three, maybe four minutes to render out. Anytime you want, you can save the file, file, save image, and 
select the fo file format and just click on save. 